Hi, my name is Chris. I am part of Ginger Marvin here on YouTube and on Instagram. And in this video, we're going to be going over how to use our new 2.0 version of our reseller spreadsheet. I did want to remind you real quick that this spreadsheet is 100% free, but any support is greatly appreciated. And there are links down in the description if you do choose to help support us. And I think it's a good idea to try out the spreadsheet for a little bit before you do decide to help support us. Now, before we even open up the spreadsheet, I do want to make a few things clear. This spreadsheet is only for Google Sheets. It will not work for Microsoft Excel. It only works for Google Sheets. But the good thing is Google Sheets is 100% free. All you need is a free Google account and you can use Google Sheets and it is cloud-based, which makes it really nice. You will also need to have at least a basic understanding of how Google Spreadsheets work. Uh, or spreadsheets in general, Excel is very similar to Google Sheets. Um, so if you understand Excel, you should understand Google Sheets pretty well. But if you don't have that basic knowledge, I highly recommend checking out YouTube for some channels and uh, videos on, on some basic tutorials of how spreadsheets work. And that's gonna make your life a whole lot easier because I can't really go over all of the basics when I'm talking about uh, all we have to do here in this video. So definitely check that stuff out if you need to do that. All right, so with all that said, let's go ahead and click the link down in the description and that will bring up the Gumroad page where you can get your copy. All right, so after clicking that link, it will bring you to this page here where we can go ahead and get our copy. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to see is it says $0, I want this, right? Well, what a lot of people have ran into in the last copy is just clicking the button doesn't work. It gives you this red box here and it will not take you any further. You do actually have to type in the number zero for it to work and not charge you. If you type in a dollar amount, you can help support us that way. But I highly recommend paying zero at first, checking it out, see if it works for you. And then if you decide to help support us, you could come back and do it this way, or you can help support by other links in our description. So let's go ahead and do zero for now and click, I want this. And then it brings up this page here and you should fill out, you might have to fill out your email address. It might fill it out already if you've already used Gumroad. So we're gonna go ahead and press get, and it's gonna redirect into the Google um, Sheets page, and then we'll be able to make a copy. You'll see here, it says, would you like to make a copy of the reseller spreadsheet 2.0? Let's go ahead and make a copy. You will also receive any kind of updates that I push out on the spreadsheet. Uh, you will receive emails on how to implement those and, and videos to watch, anything like that. Those will all come through the email that you did just sign up with. I just want to let you know that just in case this email address or this account is not one of your main ones that you use, um, that you can keep an eye out for those emails in the future. All right, so now you have officially made your first copy on your Google Drive. Um, the first thing I do want you to do is click up here and make another copy. And this is just gonna make a backup blank copy for you if you do want to use one in the new year or if you want to try any kind of experiments out. Uh, this gives you a copy that you can kind of have to play with and have as a backup for yourself. So you don't have to come back to the Gumroad site to download another copy. So let's just say uh, blank copy, right? And then anytime you do wanna make a copy, you could just go into that blank copy, make another copy and then do whatever you want to it. So let's go ahead and do that. It will open it up in another page. We're just gonna close that one out. And then we're going to rename this one to whatever you would like. I will just say Ginger Marvin Reseller Spreadsheet 2.0 in our case. You'll notice that this page is 100% blank. There is no inventory put in. Um, I do have some sample, uh, I think mileage in here. You just need to go ahead and change that to what you need. Um, but yeah, basically a blank copy. We're gonna go through everything you need to do to get started rolling with this now. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is customize our drop-down menus for ourselves. So you come, if you come over here, click this button right here, it says all sheets. It's just an easy way to get through any of your tabs instead of having to come over here, scroll over. It's a nice quick little shortcut. You can click there. Um, and then once we get here, you're going to customize your purchase locations, your categories, your source by, you can use whatever we have here or you can change it to however you see fit. Um, one thing that um, you could do is if you have multiple Goodwill locations, you could actually end up putting the different locations there if that's something you want. We just have it all lumped into Goodwill uh, and so on and so forth. 
Um, categories the same. You can you can get as wide and broad or as narrow as you want. Um, you just put them all here. Source by this is a category or this is a column that you may or may not need to use. If you're the only one sourcing in your business, you really don't need to worry about this. And I would actually recommend just leaving them blank and not even filling out the sourced by location if you are a single uh, person operation. But if you do have multiple people and you do want to know who's doing what, this is where you would do that. Um, special designation, that's something we can use later on down the line. You probably won't need to fill any of that out right now, but you can. Again, with any of these, you can come back at any time, make changes, and uh, quickly make updates to your spreadsheet. Um, platform sold, this is where you all the platforms that you sell on would go. Um, shipping provider, again, you just change these how you see fit. Adjustments, those are probably going to be pretty much all you need. You might want to get rid of some, add some more. Just really depends on how custom you would like to make it. But once you're up and running with your drop down menus, that's all you need to do on this tab for now. All right, so it's a different day. I'm wearing a different shirt. I don't know what happened, but the clip that is supposed to go right here, I couldn't find it. I don't know if I pressed delete or if I never press the record button, but the information is going to be the same. So I'm going to just re-record it real quick. So the first thing you're going to do is fill out your item description. You do want this to be as descriptive as possible so that it's easy to find when you are looking up your items when they do sell. What we like to do or rec what we recommend to do is using your actual listing description and just put that here. That way when something sells, all you have to do is copy it and paste it when you are searching in here and it finds it very easily. So that's a good way to do it. Just be as descriptive as you need to be so that you can differentiate your own inventory items from each other. And then just put in your purchase date here. All you gotta do is double click that, select the date. Um, pretty simple, same with purchase location. This is all based on your drop down menus tab over here. So if you need to add something or remove something, you do that here and it will be in the order that you have it typed here. Then you just add in your cost of goods. Pretty simple. We like to weigh our items before we list them so that we can easily figure out how much it's going to ship once we do get offers or when we're doing our listings or whatever. But so we do put our ounces here in the item weight. In this case, these shoes weigh eight ounces. Um, these are men's shoes. These are very light Nike men's shoes. <laughs> They're under a pound. We do put where they are sourced by the special designation. This is something like if you're going on a trip um, or if you're doing a special like challenge, like we do challenges and stuff with our YouTube videos sometimes like our stimulus check challenge or if we go on a trip to uh, like Omaha or Salt Lake City, we, you know, we'll differentiate those different trips based on the special designation. And you do the same thing when you are in your drop down menus that will all be here. And you can uh, just kind of tag your specific items to specific events in your business. You put the date listed. This is the new column for this spreadsheet. And anytime you put something listed, this is just going to make it easy for you to track it in your active listings tab. You will see here that this item is showing up in active listings and it is now eight days old because when I first recorded this, I think it was only a couple days old or maybe one day old, um, but that is there here. And this, you don't have to edit because it just does automatically. Again, that will remove itself once you mark something as sold. We're not gonna do that in this case. Um, and then you have your notes tab for any kind of notes or bundles if that's what you want to do. And I almost forgot one of the most important parts, the bin location. This is where we store our inventory in our bins. So whatever inventory system you have, whatever identifier you use for where that item is, that's what you're going to put in this column A once you do get it in your inventory system. Sometimes we do it at the same time. Sometimes we'll go back and do it all at once. Kathy will sit at the computer and I'll put stuff in boxes and just relay that box code back to her so that we can get everything in order and where it's supposed to be. And that way, when it does sell, you know exactly where your item is. You could pull it out and ship it. You know how much it weighs. You know everything about it at that point, and you're ready to go. I do want to address a very common question that we have received um, on what to do with multi-quantity items. So say you get a lot of the exact same item. So you have five uh, 
large blue Adidas t-shirts like we have sold in the past. They're the exact same print, the exact same size. You got them all um, retail arbitrage. And so how do you put that in the spreadsheet? Uh, it's pretty easy. You just make five lines. So however many your quantity is, you want to add a new line for each of those items. Blue shirt, you can be as descriptive as you need. Um, purchase date was, uh, let's say we got these on Wednesday last week and we got these from TJ Maxx cause it was a retail arbitrage and they were $5.99 each. They each weigh six ounces. They are all uh, men's shirts, so men's clothes. And they were all sourced by Kathy. And date listed, you would put the date that you listed. The Even if it's a multi-quantity listing, you do want to have that date listed here. And when we do our inventory, we do store exact things alike in the same box. So let's say these would all be in box B. Okay, so easiest thing to do now is since we have all that information, you can highlight it and then push control C. And then however many you want to copy. So let's say we have five, let's make four copies, right? So you're going to want to hold control shift V. And that will paste four more copies of that. It will keep all the same formatting, it will keep all the font. And so the reason we do it on individual lines is because all of these items are going to sell on different days. They're, they might even sell different months or different platforms, right? So you want to track all of that stuff individually so that when things do sell, okay, say we just sold a, uh, a blue shirt uh, yesterday, right? It'll take it off of your days active. You can come in here, uh, put in your sold price. You're going to have different sold prices. You're going to have different shipping costs because of different distances from you. So this is just the best way to manage multi-quantity items. And so now that brings us to what happens when something sells. We've already filled out all of our existing inventory that we have listed. What do we do when it sells? Pretty simple. You'll notice, again, we have all the dark blue. That's stuff that you do before the sale. And the light blue is all the stuff that you do after the sale. So let's, again, let's say that this blue shirt sold on uh, the 26th. Let's say the sale price was $19.99. Let's say it sold on Poshmark. The fees were $2. There was no promoted fees. You could either put zero or just leave it blank. Um, shipping was provided by Poshmark. Shipping cost was zero because it was Poshmark. Oops. And we don't have an adjustment or anything yet because there has not been any kind of returns or anything like that. So it's that easy to record a sale. And you'll notice after we do that, it's not on our dashboard, what's going on? Well, all you gotta do is select that month and then it will be there. You'll see men's clothes, one item, $20. And this will continue to update with all of the sales that you do input. So let's just do another one real quick. This one sold the day before. This one sold for $17.99. We took a lower offer on eBay, let's say. The fees were less. $1.25. I don't know what the fees would be actually. <laughs> so we did promote this one and we paid 50 cents to promote it. Uh, shipping provider was pirate ship. We decided to do pirate ship this day and shipping cost was $4.99. Uh, again, these are all just theoretical numbers. You're going to fill out your actual numbers when you do your actual sales. Um, and let's uh, say this one, we ended up uh, giving the buyer a shipping discount. They paid $6. We paid $5 and we're giving them that $1 uh, shipping refund. And actually this would be a good thing to update the adjustment with just adding, uh, let's do that right now. I'll show you real quick. Um, this is a perfect example. So shipping discount, that'd be a good thing to keep track of separately. So now we can come back here and update that to shipping discount. Awesome. And if we look back at our dashboard, oh, it's already updated. Two items. They were both sourced from the same location, but one sold on eBay, one sold on Poshmark. Our net profit is $17.76. Our adjusted net profit is $16.76. That's the basic concept of how this whole spreadsheet works in a nutshell.
All right, so a quick little tip on how to find things when they sell. We've ran into this uh, with some users. Uh, how do you find an item when you have a thousand or hundreds or thousands of items listed and in inventory? How do you find that exact item? This is when using the actual title for your description here would come in really handy. Um, but basically all you have to do is hold control, press F, that will bring up this uh, search box here and you could type in whatever you need. Um, and it will highlight that search term in all of your, your whole page essentially. So if I did like max, right, if I was trying to see TJ Maxx for whatever reason, it might, you know, interfere. Um, but, uh, if you wanted to search shirt and you see, it's not case sensitive. I, I typed a capital H there. Um, and then all you have to do is click up, down, and it will scroll through all of the found listings there. Again, if you're using the exact title for the description here, it's a very easy way to find that. All right, so I've added in some existing data uh, just to kind of help fill out the spreadsheet a little bit, um, just like 100 items or so, nothing too big, but uh, some sales, some unsold stuff, just to give us a little bit more information to play with here. So let's look at how the monthly dashboard works. You'll see up here we have a start month and end month selector. All you have to do is select the month you want to start. That does include all of the sales of that month. So here, for example, we have our sales from 1-1, which is January, all the way through 7-1. Now it says 7-1, but it does include all sales of July. So when you select, it just shows it as the first day of the month here. But once you select it, it does show January through July. Okay. So it's a little uh, confusing, but that's the way Google Sheets does handle this data for some reason. Just know that if you have the month selected here, it is including the entire month. Um, here we can select different agents that is your uh, sourcing people that is tracked on the inventory sheet as your sourced by column. So whatever you have selected here, that will reflect here. And you'll see Kathy sources and finds and sells much more than I do in this data, in reality too, in this data sheet, but yeah. Um, now, if you want to go back to overall, like what has happened in the past is some users um, will select one and then maybe they don't have all of these filled out. Maybe they don't have um, them filled out to the same name. So if you want to look at everything as a whole, all you have to do is clear that out, press enter, and it adjusts to anything that it has sold, whether or not it has a name on this column here. So if you're going to use it, you have to make sure you use it 100%. Um, like for instance, if I, this is a sold item. If I take this out here and I get rid of Kathy's name there, if we go here, it's not going to show that sale here when I select Kathy's name, but it will show that sale if I delete that and have nothing selected there. So that's something to keep in mind. If your numbers don't look right, make sure your agent filter is not aff affecting that. Next up, these numbers here seem to have a little bit of confusion. To help make this make sense, basically July we have 15 sales, which is a six and a quarter percent less number than June sales. So if we go here let's see what our june sales are 16. so it's one sale less which was actually uh 33 more than may so may had 12 okay so that's what these numbers here these are the difference between last month which you also have to remember last month was a complete month usually like right now it, we are in the middle of july so these numbers are probably always going to be read until the last day of the month this really is helpful um, on data that has been completed. So like January to February, we had a 62% decrease in sales. This all just kind of numbers just to help you. Can, you can see the trend line here. The trend line is what you really want to look at overall, making sure your business is trending up and not trending down or trending straight if that's your goal. Um, next up, everything is the same with the last version. This is all your items that have sold and their categories. So you can see based on this data, women's shoes, we have sold the most of, and it is actually the highest average sale price too. But you see men's shoes is the second highest, even though we've only sold 11. 
um, our average sale price is higher. So that's how you kind of look at this number here. It gives you a cool little graph. Same with purchase location. This is just showing you where you purchased the items um, just to kind of help you understand what your best performing um, thrift locations are. You can kind of use that data as you see fit. You can see ours is Goodwill. So we should probably be shopping at Goodwill more. And remember, this is all based on stuff that has sold. This is not pulling any information that has not sold yet. Here you'll see a monthly recap of all your sales. Um, January, we had eight. February, we had three. March, we had two, so on and so forth. It just kind of gives you a cool way to look at all. You can see your average sale price over the last few months and your total sales. If you wanted to see your net profit or your adjusted net profit, that's going to be down in this section here, and you'll see all of our profit months. You'll see June, we had the most profitable month, and yeah, it reflects here as well. Platform sold, this is where you're going to see what your best performing platform is, and in this case with this data, eBay is the winner, followed up by Poshmark. So it will add based on all of the information that you add in. So that's the basic overview of what the dashboards do and what they tell you. Um, same with the weekly dashboard, except we can do a week by week basis. So if we wanted to look at all the weeks in July, we can see, uh oh, our sales have been trending down this July. Let's check out June. Let's see how June did. Oh, our sales trended way up all throughout June. So that's awesome. So this is just uh, the same kind of thing. You had the same agent filter, which, you know, again, if you're having weird number issues, go ahead and get rid of that agent filter unless you're using it 100% of the time. And the rest of the dashboard is basically the same. It's just pulling the information on a week to week basis versus a month to month basis. Another thing to point out is the way these week selections work here is uh, this, you have to consider this date as like the week of the 8th. So the week of the 8th, let's look and see what January 8th was. January 8th was a Saturday. So each one of these dates is going to be the Saturday. So this will, this selecting this number will select this entire week so all the way from the second to the eighth so obviously in our data here we don't have a sale on january 1st so it's not giving us an option to select january 1st this is only going to give you options of weeks and of months that you have sales in if you don't have a sale in january it's not going to give you an option to select january on this list and as soon as we have a sale in august we will be able to select August. So I think we've gone over how the dashboards work here. You'll see this is you know, our adjusted net profit for all the weeks, uh, pretty straightforward. So that is how the dashboards work. I wanted to show you guys how we handle uh, marking bundles. This is something that we haven't really figured out a perfect situation for. It's a little bit clunky, but it's the only real way that we have uh, found a good way of, of looking this kind of stuff up. Um, we use the notes column. You could actually end up using one of these spare columns if that's something you wanted to do. Um, we're just going to use the notes column here as an example. But let's say uh, let's let's say that this north face sold um, and we just type basically bundle and then give it an identifier. So if it's like a viewer, we'll use their name or a number or anything like that. Um, one thing you could also do is have like some kind of code system and then add an extra tab right and then say bundle one and then have you know sold to this person on this date kind of thing that's something you could do if you would like um, we're not going to worry about that today but we're just going to notify okay this sold on bundle one and it sold today and let's say that also the starbucks sold today to bundle one whatever that bundle is. So once you have that information, you do want to make sure that it's different and unique to each bundle. So if you come up here, highlight uh, the P column or whatever column you do have your bundles in, click that filtered view button and uh, create a new filtered view. Then it gives you this little triangle here. Um, and then you can unselect anything that is not that bundle. The easiest way is to uh, clear. And then you could search in here that 
uh, bundle ID, click it, uh, make sure it's checked, and then press OK. And then that will only show you everything that you have marked in that bundle. Then you can come through, add in all of your pricing. Um, you could put all the sale price on one item. For instance, say this bundle sold for $29. And we'll just mark that one as zero. Um, they sold on eBay. The fees were, you know, $3. I, these are just random numbers. Again, let's just say no promoted fees. It sold, uh, we're doing eBay shipping. Shipping cost was $5.99. We'll go ahead and lump that all on that one item there. Um, no adjustments yet. So uh, this sale, we actually didn't very, we didn't make very much profit, did we? Uh, because our cost of goods, oh, our cost of goods on that item was nineteen forty three. Um, so you can actually highlight these numbers at the very end for your net profit or adjusted net profit. And then if you look down here, you'll see what the sum of those are. So on this bundle, we lost forty two cents. That's basically what's what that is saying. Uh, again, these numbers are just arbitrary. So um, that is kind of the best way that we've figured out how to manage bundles. Um, now we need to be able to go back, right? Because once you're in this view, uh, it's a little weird and hard to see. All you gotta do is press this X button up here and that should bring you back. Um, all of your numbers are gonna be the same. And if you ever did want to look up that bundle again, you can come back up here, uh, click that filter. You can actually name that filter if you want, right? Um, we'll do bundle one. And then anytime you come up here and click bundle one, it's gonna bring this bundle here. That's gonna get very clunky if you do a lot of bundles. This is gonna fill up very quick. Um, so it's not something you necessarily need to have active all the time. Um, once you're done, if you're done looking at it, you can easily uh, come in here and delete this filter right? And then whenever you want to, you can go back and look it up again by creating a new filter, right? Create new filter, filter this, only show bundle one, and then we're back. So pretty easy to do once you understand the concept, but uh, it, it is kind of clunky and it's the best way that we've figured out how to do it so far. All right, and while we are on this inventory tab, I did want to mention and to reiterate that this tab cannot, or this page cannot really be edited. You can't add in columns that will actually break the dashboards. These dashboards are reliant on having the columns in a very specific place um, and moving one or adding one kind of moves things around and breaks the dashboards. So if you don't have enough columns here, um, with our spare columns, you know, I've given eight. If that happens to not be enough, what you can do is at the very end, um, if you extend this out, you can add columns to the end, right? So you just right click on the next one, insert one column on the right, and you can add columns on the right. It won't be in the order that you would like. You can't have it next to the specific column you would like it next to but that is the only way that you will be able to add columns and not break the dashboard. Next up, I'll quickly go over how to use the expense log and the mileage log. It's pretty straightforward. Um, let's just do an example here. Let's say uh, Amazon mailers and we spent, we bought them today. This should give us that there and we spent uh, 39.50. That will give you a total number up here, and you, you, it's just an easy, quick and dirty way to track all of your expenses. Same with the bills here. Let's see, we do use List Perfectly. Um, we use it every month. So let's select the first of the month, and then you can you know easily make copies if you want, and do it on the first of the months. And actually, uh, Google Sheets is pretty smart. It should copy that and extrapolate that data there. Um, I don't remember exactly how much we pay, so this is just a random number here. I th it's around $70 a month. So you're obviously going to want to put in the right dollar amount there and so on and so forth. So you could do this however you need to, keep it going, and track your bills there. If you do need to add more lines, it's as simple as adding more lines. Just add 10 lines. It should copy everything on down and you should be good to go.
It gives you all the totals at the top and it's very easy to reference. Again, you can also use control F on this tab to find anything if you are looking for a specific bill or expense. If you have a really long list here, you can still use that control F. With the mileage log, it's basically the same. You just wanna track this stuff as you are doing your miles. And again, I think I recommended using a app on your phone to track your miles, which we don't yet, but we will be probably going to that very soon. And that will just kind of take this kind of manual data entry out of the equation. But there is a mileage log here if you would like to use it. If you don't want to use it, you just don't even worry about it. You can move this tab to the very end so it's hidden and you're good to go. The next two tabs I would like to go over are the active listings and sold listings tabs. Um, you don't really need to do anything with these tabs, but I just kind of wanted to show you uh, how we use them and how useful they can be. The most useful thing about the active listings tab here is it shows you how old your listings are and the oldest ones are at the top. So that means these ones at the top are the ones that you should be doing some kind of action on or looking into and seeing why they haven't sold. Like why hasn't this Vans Navy Blue Ultra Kush light sneakers, why have these not sold in 208 days? I have $13.53 of cost of goods tied up in these. I need to get that money back. So that's basically the, uh, the best use for this tab here. Another very important thing to note about this tab here is it only pulls from your inventory tab if it is filled out with a date listed. So you'll see if I select this thing and said it was listed today, that will update with that listing here today. It's not going to pull anything unless it has the date listed selected. That's important to know because that is giving you your total cost of goods number up here, which is the total cost of goods number up here. So this number is not going to be correct if you're not using the date listed tab. If you're not using the date listed tab and you would like to know what your cost of goods is, you can always go to the inventory tab here, select available inventory on the filter. You will need to make sure that the range here is correct. Um, if you just delete the number, it should auto fill the entire page. You'll see it just changed it to 350. That's because our current page right now has 350 lines. That will include all of the data there. And then you can um, just select your cost of goods column here and select sum, and that will give you the total. So you'll notice I'm getting a number of 657.60 on this list here, which is not the same here. That's because I don't have the date listed filled out on all of these. So I just wanted to make that known and why, if that number is not working out, that's why. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And the next tab is the sold listings tab. Again, this, you don't really need to do anything with this tab. It's just kind of pulling everything that has sold and it is sorted in the date sold uh, fashion. So this is in order of everything that has sold for you by date. So most recent sales at the bottom, oldest sales at the top. Again, this was my way of getting away from the filtered views um, because like we just did where I had to, uh, increase the range. You're constantly adding new items and people often forget to increase the range here, or they don't quite understand how fil filters work. So, um, this is, this was my way of getting away from that. So hopefully it works out. I have left the filtered views if that is your preferred method, but these, uh, tabs here are much more, um, set it and forget it and ready to go. All right. Next up, we have the daily totals tab. This again, was something that Kathy had requested. If you did want to use it, it's here. Um, the only thing you need to make sure is that it has selected everything. This is just like the filtered views. It has a range and the range does not automatically update. It's kind of one of the biggest things that bothers me about Google Sheets is the, the range of the selections that you have does not automatically update as you add new information in. The first thing you need to do is just click anywhere on this chart here and uh, if you delete the last numbers, uh, all that does is it's telling it to select all of the numbers in the columns. So you do that and it does update. It's a 
pain in the butt to remember. I know it's a, it's annoying. If you do want to use that, that's just you have to remember to update the range. Otherwise, it's not going to give you the right numbers. So I did just want to show that to you guys, um, how to use it, and then it just gives you basically a um, a day by day breakdown, so you could see what your gross profit or your net profit and adjustment was and all that kind of stuff. So it's here for you if you would like it. All right, this was another part of the video where I don't know what happened to it. It's gone, so I'm re-recording it, but it is called the At A Glance tab, and I'm gonna show you how to use it. So the At A Glance tab is basically just the same kind of thing as your dashboards here, but uh, instead of being like a visual representation, it's much more of a numerical, um, just straight the numbers. And the cool thing about it is you can filter it down based on category or platform sold, special designation. I'm gonna show you how to do it right now, it's pretty easy. The first thing you want to do is, if you're going to use this tab, you need to make sure that the range of data is updated. This is something that is annoying. For some reason, Google Sheets does not automatically update the range. Uh, all you need to do is make sure that this number here represents the same number of lines um, on your inventory sheet, because you're always adding in lines. You'll see down, if I go all the way down to the bottom, we have 450 lines and our at a glance is only pulling from the first 350. So it's easy, all you gotta do is select your table, click edit, and then come up here. And if you just delete the numbers and press enter, it should update it. You'll see there it's 450 now, and we should be good to go. All right, so after you have updated the data range for your pivot table, you have these slicers over here and this will let you narrow things down however narrow you would like to get so let's say we want to check just ebay sales um let's check uh men's clothes uh gotta clear all this let's say let's see what all of our men's items are doing right now on a month by month basis and we don't have any special designation either but another thing you can do is if you want to add your own slicer you get it's easy you just come up here to data add a slicer, select this range here, and then you could choose whatever you would like to slice it by. Um, let's do sourced by, that would be a good one to have here. Uh, and then we can go ahead and, and check out the things that Kathy has done and we wanna compare our numbers, right? Again, this does a lot of the same stuff as our dashboards over here, but it's more numerical and you can, you can slice it up a lot more than we can on the dashboards. So that's really all the at a glance tab is for. If you didn't want to do that, you just delete it and you're good to go. It doesn't mess with your data. It's just pulling the information. So it's a really cool way to look and dive deep into your numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and get started copying our existing data from the old spreadsheet into the new spreadsheet. It is very simple, but there are some nuances that you want to make very sure that you do pay attention to. And I'll go over those obviously, but the very first thing I want you to do is make a backup of your original data that we are copying from. Um, and what that's gonna do is if we do have a mistake or anything like that, we can always just kind of start fresh and start over. Um, and there's no possibility of having messed up data in the process. So let's go ahead and make a backup copy like we did the backup of the original copy here. And then once you do that, let's open up your copied version and start copying data. I know I just said copy like a hundred times, but so in this instance, I'm only going to be copying a small selection from our spreadsheet, uh, but it's going to be the same thing. You just select as much or as little as you would like to copy. Pretty easy. The first thing we need to realize is the new sheet has more columns than the old sheet. And if we just tried to copy all of the data at once, it's going to get things all jumbled. So we do have to copy in a semi-specific order and I'll show you that right here. If you follow along, it shouldn't be too difficult, but um, we're gonna start off by copying these sections here, this area here. So the first columns are bin location, item description, purchase date, purchase location, cost of goods, item weight, category, sourced by, and special designation. When you're doing this, you do wanna make sure you have all of your columns unhidden so that it does copy and you're kind of not getting things mixed up. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and hide all the columns you don't use. But for this process, make sure you have everything unhidden. So I have what I want to copy highlighted. I'm going to refer to the new sheet just to make sure that I'm correct. So A through I is bin location through special designation, A through I, so we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Control C to copy that highlighted selection. 
And then make sure when you paste, you have to select the very top left most cell of the area that you're trying to paste into. So in this case, it is A136. And when you're pasting, if you hold Control Shift V, you're going you're going to want to make sure you hold Control Shift V when you do paste. And what that does is it doesn't copy any text formatting or any uh, background color or font color, anything like that. It basically pastes it into the formatting of your new sheet. And it just makes things easier to read, um, easier to process and all that kind of stuff. Don't worry about these invalid tags here. We'll worry about those after we're done copying, but I can see that this section has copied over successfully. So I'm gonna scroll over. Uh, we obviously can't copy anything from date listed or days active, but notes is something that we can copy. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the notes selection here. Make sure that I've got it right, Control C. So the reason I have uh, only copied notes over, and if you really wanted to, you could copy one column at a time just to make sure you get it perfectly right um, instead of doing like multiple columns at a time like I'm doing here. But notes specifically, you do have to do uh, on its own because it is surrounded by those four extra or those eight extra columns that I have added in. So uh, it will kind of mess up if you if you don't do it on its own. So the next columns I can copy over are date sold, sold price, platform sold, and fees because of course the uh, promoted fees is a new column and we don't have any information to copy over from that. So let's go ahead and select those here. Um, so date sold, sold price, platform sold, and fees, control C. And then we come over here, make sure you select the top left most cell that you're pasting into, control shift V. Everything looks good, we can keep moving on. Um, shipping provider and shipping cost is the last two cells that you need to worry about. So it's as easy as just selecting those control C and then coming over here and then control V make sure you're in the right cell to paste it in. If you do make a mistake, control Z is undo, right? If I paste it into this, Oh, that's not right. I did something wrong. Don't worry. Just push control Z. If you're paying attention and you're making sure everything looks right before you move to the next step, you could just undo and then just keep moving on. So let's paste that into the right place. And we're good to go. Everything has copied over. Everything looks right. But remember, we did have these um, invalid tags here. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So all you got to do is control C on what it is. Go back over to your uh, drop down menus and then control shift V again, paste it there. Make sure you don't have duplicates. Um, if you do happen to have a duplicate, maybe something is spelled incorrectly. Um, you would just need to retype it in here correctly. You can actually just select it from the list to the correct one that you want. And that's basically it. We have copied all of our data into our new sheet. Everything on the dashboard, looks okay nothing seems broken and we are good to go and with that i think we are done i think i've gone over everything we need to go over so that you can be up and running using the new version of the reseller spreadsheet if i did miss anything let me know down in the comments and i will be sure to address those in the future if you've made it all the way through to the end and you have not been subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button. If we do have updates to the spreadsheet in the future, all those videos will be posted here and this will be the first place that you will see that information. And we also have other videos on the channel too that you might enjoy. So go check those out. We would greatly appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up on this video if you don't mind. And if you are using the spreadsheet, if you like it, that is a great way to let me know that you guys are enjoying it. And if you did happen to want to help support us because this spreadsheet is free, there are links down in our description that you can help support us, whether it's buying us a coffee or even just using our Amazon links on stuff that you're already planning on buying. That stuff really goes a long way and all of it is greatly appreciated. Anyway, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much. I think my voice is going out too. So I think I'm done talking for the day. Guys, thank you again. We appreciate all of the support and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.